Now, the first civilian governor of Lagos State and frontline journalist, the late Latif Kayode Jokande, is usually accredited with championing the course of a free press over a career that spanned decades. It's been close to three years since, I beg your pardon, not three years, it's been a while since he actually passed on, but as they say, uh, as the saying goes, his legacy lives on. Now, tomorrow here in Lagos, the Arnold Latif Jokande Memorial Lecture will take place. The event is organized by the Nigeria Guild of Editors, and we are being joined now by our veteran journalist, Dr. Iyobosa Uwugarian, who is the General Secretary of the Guild. We want to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. I know yeah. that certainly um, tomorrow is uh, an epoch-making day, understanding that the legacies of the former governor of Lagos State, who is a pioneer, Latif Jakonde, will be celebrated with the theme Latif Jakonde, the man, his journalism, and his politics. He actually set out mile markers for people to follow. What will tomorrow be capturing in terms of his legacy and what people can learn from it? Thank you very much. Well, the reason behind the annual lecture, first, is for historical memory. And two, uh, the deliberate attempt by the Nigerian Guild of Editors, the professional body of all editors in Nigeria, to, to also institute the culture of appreciation. Um, like you know, Jack Conde was the, the pioneer president of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. He was also the pioneer president of the Newspaper Proprietor Association of Nigeria. Um, he was also instrumental to the creation of Nigeria Union of Journalists. So um, for us, Jack Conde um, laid the foundation for robust journalism that um, we, we are practicing in Nigeria today. Um, Jacode started his journalistic career around 1949 with uh, the Daily Service. And in 1953, uh, he joined Nigeria Tribune. And by 1956, he was already the editor-in-chief of uh, the Nigeria uh, Tribune. Um, Jacode was, was a crusader of press freedom. He was a crusader of access to information. Um, he fought for the enabling environment for journalism uh, to, to strive in Nigeria. And um, we believe that um, there is need for us to hone on uh, such a person by instituting an annual lecture you know, to coincide with his birthday. Uh, the, the lecture was supposed to take place on uh, July 23rd, but because of the logistic, we we'll move it to August. So tomorrow, um, journalists, I mean, um, Jack O'Day colleagues, uh, veteran journalists, the likes of um, um, Doc, uh, Chief uh, Felix Adenike will be there. Uh, the former uh, Nigeria ambassador to Brazil, uh, Dele Ko, will also be there. Uncle Sam Mamuka of the publisher, publisher of um, Bangani Super, Chegu Shoba. We'll all be there tomorrow, you know, to talk about uh, Jack O'Day. Uh, his politics, his journalism, and um, his, um, his career. Mm. Um, so the Lagos State government is uh, partnering with uh, Nigerian Guild of Editors, and we expect the governor of Lagos State, uh, Sam Olu, to be there tomorrow as special guest of honors. Very good, uh, Doctor. Now, in view of uh, late uh, Latif Jakundi's uh, contributions, and of course uh, his uh, pioneering works, not only as a governor, but his uh, you know, pace-setting abilities in the uh, journalistic world as well. So, in view of this, where are we for press freedom in Nigeria currently? You know, what are the stakes? You know, what are the challenges? And how can all of this be overcome? Yes. And um, what should we be doing right to ensure that the voices of the people are heard? Jack on the tomorrow will, will be an opportunity for, for rocks to even to also remind our colleagues, professional journalists, that kind of uh, legacy that uh, Jack Conde left behind is about robust journalism. It's about journalism with responsibility. Uh, journalism uh, that, that always you know, take into consideration the ethical conduct. Um, I remember I started my journalism career in the Nigerian Institute of Journalism before I went to Lagos University, University of Abuja. Uh, as a student in NIJ those days, Jack Conde was always coming to our school uh, to, to teach us um, the ethics. And I remember those things he usually tell us uh, then was that uh, as journalists, we don't have 
the mandate to fabricate stories. And as journalists, we must imbibe the, 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 the values of the, the disciplines of verification, which means that whatever you want to write, you must be sure that your story is true, the whole truth, uh, not about the truth. Um, yeah, journalism, the ethics is, some, some people believe that the ethics is going down. So tomorrow we also have an opportunity for us to also remind our colleagues that this, this is where we are coming from and this is the way that we should go. Um, in terms of press freedom, um, Jack Conde was, was an architect of that, I mean, was, was a crusader of, of press freedom. Mm. And we know that um, um, some people believe that today Nigerian press freedom is, uh, is not too good. Uh, I agree with that, especially during the military regime. Uh, we all suffer it. And that is why uh, we keep on talking about the fact that, you know, the, 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 the worst civilian government is better than the best military regime. And we must, at every time, not encourage uh, military incursions into our politics. But for those of us who practiced during the military era, we, 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 it, was, it, it was bad for, for journalism. Now, since 1999 to date, I'm not saying it is all good, but there are a few, there are a few problems here and there. Mm. But as a professional body like Nigerian Guild of Editors, the, the press redundance, we keep on putting the issue of press redundance in our front burner. And we, we've organized seminars, several workshops, you know, to sensitize the public, the government, on the need for us to respect press freedom. Because whether we like it or not, in a decent society, in a democratic setting all over the world, journalism is seen, journalism is seen or the media is seen as the oxygen of democracy. Once you destroy that oxygen, you are indirectly, indirectly also destroying democracies. Mm -hmm. So at every point in time, we must allow journalists to carry out their responsibility in line with the details of the social responsibility and the ethics of journalism. I mean, in, in line with the constitution of, 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 an, of our country. You remember section 22 of 1999 constitution says that the press shall at all time, even if you say once in a while, you say at, shall at all time hold public officer accountable and to the people within the context of the ethics of journalism. I agree, there's no absolute freedom when it comes to uh, uh, Press freedom because freedom also comes with responsibility, and and and, and that is what we've been we been we be preaching, and we hope that this government um, will, will create the enabling environment for us to practice our job. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm impressed with uh, what um, the one of the minister Nomili said a few days ago. I'm talking of uh, Dila Lake when he appeared before the Senate, and he said as as a journalist. He will, if he's appointed as the Minister of Information and Culture, that he will do everything, you know, to create that culture of press freedom and access to information. And uh, we want to believe that, that the government will follow that path because that is the way to go. All right, let's pick up from your last statement because it's good you mentioned Delia Lake and a lot of people view him with polarized um, binoculars, so to speak, because of the way he went about things and being a seasoned journalist, being a veteran in the profession, people expected better. Because it must be stated here, yeah, according to the African Media Development Foundation, which came out with a report on Wednesday, it said that Nigeria actually has the highest number of violations of press freedom in Africa, citing the 2023 general elections as a touching point to showing how bad things are. And it's unfortunate that um, we find ourselves in a, in, in a dispensation. Now, I'm not just talking about democratic dispensation. We're talking about dispensation in terms of journalism, whereby remunerations are poor and the opportunity is given to journalists to actually do their job without fear or favor is actually very, very low. And you look at all this, and we're not even talking about the military era right now. Trying to focus on the press in 2023, trying to vista into the fourth estate of the realm in 2023. Some will say, because of our political predilectives, sometimes even journalists have also sold themselves out for other journalists to be oppressed, to be suppressed. Because we saw that play out at the general elections because some people felt one political candidate was better than the others. And they 
and they were a little bit too iron fisted in the way they went, they went about proving their points. And here we are. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, especially in the eight years of uh, Buhari regime, there was, um, there was a deliberate attempt on the part of uh, General Buhari uh, government to create fear in, in the way we practice, practice, our, our, uh, practice journalism, especially the broadcast uh, st uh, stations. Um, the minister then of information then was, was very unfriendly. At every point in time, he believed that um, television stations were fun. Um, I'm sure RIS TV was not, uh, was not excluded. And at that point, we came out strongly. I'm talking of Nigerian government, where we issued a statement and, and asked the government that the media were not opposition party and that we're doing our job in line with the, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that they should see uh, journalists as such. Um, I think there was, there was an attempt under the Buhari regime to silence uh, journalists, especially the broadcast, from you know, asking tough questions when it comes to interview sessions like this. Um, I remember when I appeared in one of the radio stations in, uh, in Nigeria, in, in Abuja, when somebody asked me to evaluate the, the, the way Buhari government was uh, you know, handling the issue of insecurity in Nigeria. And I didn't mention that Buhari government was very irresponsible and irresponsive in, in tackling the security situations in Nigeria. The next day I was told that the NBC you know, asked the, that station to pay one million naira by virtue of what I said, that the government was not responsible enough in tackling the issue of insecurity. And there were so many instances like that. Um, yes, I also remember during the election, um, where people keep on making reference to Dilia Lake. Yeah, I remember because he was a spokesperson to one of the presidential candidates, I'm talking of the present president, and he was very, very combative. You know, he believed that the, the media were, 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 were crossing the red light in terms of asking the candidate tough questions. And because of that fear, and yeah, it was, it was, it, it didn't find it quite friendly at all. And I remember that this day and arise, this day where I work and arise, became the target of uh, Dela Lake. But at, at the point, there was the Nigerian Guild of Editors, newspaper proprietors of Nigeria, you know, created that forum where we where we made it very clear to Alake and his team that journalists uh, this day arise were doing their job and they should be allowed to do. Their job. So at, at, at that point, the issue was 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 resolved. Very, very but I hope it will not continue along that line. Okay. Because <laughs> it, it is it, 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 <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> it, it, a candidate now. He's not the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. On that, that's as much as we can take uh, because of uh, time, uh, Dr. Yobasa. Mujigarin, um, General Secretary, Nigerian Guild of Editors, would like to thank you for enlightening us on the memorial lecture uh, for the late uh, Latif Jakondi, and of course uh, on press freedom as well. It's good to have you with us. Thank you very much.